Welcome to the Sexual Wellness Podcast, real life conversations with industry experts on modern sexuality and how to live a happy, healthy, turned on life. I'm your host, Laura Allen, founder of New Zealand's leading sexual wellness store and holistic sex, love and life coach, passionately guiding women to expand their pleasure in and outside the bedroom. Welcome back to the Sexual Wellness Podcast. It's my birthday today. Mm -hmm. I have turned 30 years old today. In fact, it was just over an hour ago that I transitioned into a new decade of my life. And I got to say, I don't quite know how I feel about it. I mean, I'm really excited about my 30s. I don't have any kind of like, oh my God, I'm turning 30. I'm so old. Like, no. No, no, no. I embrace getting older. I just get better and better with age, to be honest. And I guess it's more just like packing up my 20s. Like, oh my God, what a decade. How do I say goodbye to 10 years of just complete and utter epicness? Mm, So that's what I'm feeling into at the moment. And this weekend, I'm having a huge celebration with some close friends close friends of mine and the intention for the whole weekend is to bring all of the things that we love about ourselves and that we love doing with others so there'll be yoga and poetry and music and adventuring in the mountains and swimming in rivers and connecting and being with each other as well as eating a lot of extremely delicious nourishing plant-based food so yeah pretty much just doesn't get any better than that ah oh, that was a total side note I was absolutely not planning on sharing that whatsoever but there you go you're welcome um today I'm actually coming to you with the four unsuspecting reasons why you may not be enjoying sex or you may not be feeling really inspired and lit up in your sex life I think there's a lot of, you know, go-to excuses, you could say, for, um, you know, not having a good sex life, like, you know, work and stress and everything, which is, you know, totally relevant, and I want to acknowledge that, but there are some other ones that I wanted to bring to the table and um, bring into your awareness as well, so that you can make more empowered decisions when it comes to living a turned-on life. So the first reason why I believe you may not be getting the most out of your sex life, and it's because you're not turned on. Okay, so hear me out. We give our money to the banks. We give our health to the doctor. We give our, you know, our mental health to our healers, our psychologists, and we give our pleasure to our partners or to our lovers or to the other person who you're having an experience with. But actually feeling turned on and feeling sexy and feeling desired is up to you. It is your responsibility to be feeling turned on and sensual and ecstatic and orgasmic so that you can actually bring that bliss and that energy into your sexual relationships. It's the, it's a similar saying where it goes, you know, fill up your own cup first and give from the overflow. You know, it's like you you need to love yourself first before you can love another and relationship, you know, all that stuff. And it's the same within sexuality. If you don't know or don't feel like you want to experience pleasure with yourself and within your own body, then how is somebody else going to do that for you? That's a lot of responsibility and it's a lot of pressure, even though it might be subconscious. It's a lot of pressure to put on any type of relationship. And I'm talking spanning from a one night stand all the way into long term marriages. 
So I want to invite you to take control of your turn on. You know, just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean that you stop self-pleasuring. Just because you're having lots of casual sex doesn't mean that you abandon your sexy self-care. Always make sure that you are maintaining your feminine essence, your your sensuality and your connection to your own eroticism so that you are bringing that into your encounters. Okay, so the next reason why you may not be having a really good time in the bedroom is... Perhaps you're simply bored. I know that's definitely can be a hard pill to swallow. You know, I think having a low libido is is almost an unfair diagnosis because, you know, saying that you have a low libido or having other people talk to you about, oh, perhaps you've got a low libido or having your partner, you know, and you communicate in a dialogue suggesting that one of you has a you know quote-unquote low libido can sort of make you feel like there's something wrong with you you know or like you know you somehow and your sexual drive is not enough when the reality is you know men women like long-term relationships like short-term relationships we are all have a natural instinct and desire to want to experience pleasure and to want to have sex. We all have thriving sex drives and we all have high libidos underneath it all. So, you know, all of these myths that you hear floating around in conversation about women having low libidos and so on and so forth, I am here to call total bullshit on that because it's simply not true. You don't have a low libido. You might just be completely bored out of your brains, you know, and who wants to have sex if you're not feeling inspired by it, if you're not feeling totally enthralled in bliss by it, if you're not feeling moved by it, if you're not feeling connected by it. If your sexual experience is one where it's surface level, and your heart isn't open, and you're only just allowing your pussy open enough to be penetrated. But as soon as there's an orgasm or ejaculation, you contract again and push your partner, even if it's energetically, to the other side of the bed. That doesn't make you feel good, and that is not conducive to a thriving, exciting sex life. So when it comes to, you know, feeling bored or feeling a sense of lackluster in the bedroom, you know, there are so, 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 so many ways to, you know, quote unquote, spice things up. Like, And again, that's in long term relationships. It's also in like casual sex relationships. There are so many ways. And I feel like so many women, especially a lot of my clients feel like they don't have any ideas or they don't know. They're not creative enough to think of new ways to connect with their partner and so on and so forth. And here's what I want to say to that. The first thing is... You can be having repetitive couple sex or, you know, the same type of sex, even with different lovers. You've got your positions that you love, you know what you want, and it will never, ever be the same if you are truly, truly present, deeply connected to yourself and with your partner and completely surrendered to the moment. Because no moment in time is ever the same twice. It's like meditation. You might sit down for 20 minutes and have one experience one day. It might be completely like, blah, that was 20 minutes. I don't even know what just happened. And then the next day you might do the exact same thing. You sit in the same pillow. It's the same time. The same meditation music. 
yet your experience is completely different. So I just want to invite you to approach your, you know, your sex from that space and make sure that you're focusing on being present and in the moment because that is where the excitement is. Another thing I want to mention is that your sexual creativity is abundant. Okay, your feminine creativity, your eroticism, your turn on, your pleasure is abundant. It's never, ever going to run out. You, it is impossible to run out of creativity. It is completely eternal. What happens is it shifts and it changes and it morphs into new things I have never once I'll just give you an example I have never once called myself a poet in my life whatsoever but journaling is something that I've been deeply into for many years and then all of a sudden I just kind of stopped writing and I didn't know why so for about three or four months there I didn't write a single word to be honest I was just like no that's not doing it for me And then all of a sudden, one day I just started writing poetry out of the blue. Look, I'm not saying it's any good, (laughs) but the, but why I'm sharing this with you is because how your, how your creativity wants to be expressed is ever changing. And it's the same within your sexuality, how you want to express yourself centrally, sexually changes all the time as well and so it's a simple practice of just being aware of your turn on being aware of your pleasure being aware of your bliss being aware of what you're wanting all the time and allowing it to change allowing it to grow allowing yourself to have down times we're going to get into that later but instead of going into anxiety or worry or feeling like there's something wrong with you just approaching it from an abundance mindset because your turn on has not run out, your sexual creativity has not run out, you're, you're not, there's nothing wrong with you. There's just a shift happening. So just allow yourself this gift of acceptance. If you're in this place right now where you're feeling stuck and unsure of where to go, you could just be going through a shift. Mm. So the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about, oh no, actually there is one more thing I wanted to talk about in terms of being bored. Um, And this is specifically for more long-term relationships, okay? And so a lot of the time when people get into long-term relationships, they start to get really comfortable with each other, okay? So like love craves closeness, Love wants to know everything about you. Love wants to feel comfortable with you. Love wants to see you every day. Love wants to be with you all the time. Love just wants to be enthralled in you and your life. But desire, desire craves mystery. Desire craves spaciousness. Desire craves intrigue. So... If you're in a position where you're feeling like you might be quite comfortable with your partner and you are no longer really experiencing that lust, that throw down desire, then there's nothing wrong. It's simply about being mindful and finding ways to reignite the desire in your relationship. And it is abso- absolutely, totally possible. If you are wanting to explore that more deeply, totally just get in touch with me. I talk to couples about this all the time, about reigniting desire and creating that that intimacy and that meaningful, like deep connected way of loving, as well as the eroticism and the mysterious flirtatious exciting dynamic of desire so if that's something that you're interested feel free to get in touch with me on my website but a couple of ways that you can do this now is you know little things like when you're going out on a date night don't 
go to the restaurant together. Show up separately. You know, like don't even get ready together. Ask him to take his clothes to work and meet you at the restaurant afterwards. And you have the whole house to yourself where you can swan around in your femininity, getting turned on, feeling sexy within yourself, getting dressed up and he's not around, you know. This is your space, your time. You're getting into your essence. You're getting into your juice. And then go and show up at the cafe, at the, you know, wherever you guys are going, mini golf, whatever. But you've created this, this mystery, you know, it's like, he doesn't know what you're doing. He's not watching you getting ready. You know, there's this space in between. There's this mystery. There's this excitement. There's this anticipation. And that is what building desire is all about. So there's all sorts of little tips and tools like that, that you can use. Okay. So now the next one that I wanted to talk to you about is perhaps you are simply in the winter season of your sexuality. Now, like as women, even as men, we are cyclic beings. Okay. We all experience seasons. Now for women, especially if you aren't taking hormonal drugs, like the pill or you know IUD whatever and if you are quite uh, connected to your cycle then I bet you that you would experience different levels of arousal and different requirements and needs for sex throughout different phases of your menstrual cycle so normally when you're bleeding that this is this is the winter phase I'm not saying that um I'm not saying that you might not want sex at all during this phase. I know for myself personally, I enjoy having I enjoy having sex on on day one and day two of my cycle. Um, but it's a different type of sex that I would have in my summer phase when I'm ovulating. In winter, I want to feel really held. I want my partner to hold me. I want to cry. I want to be mad I want to have a tantrum I want to be a total drama queen I want to be adored I want to be in my track pants on the couch all day I want to be looked after I want to be held and I want to be seen in like the messy drama of all of who I am in that moment and I love it I really really relish in that but then in my in summer when I'm ovulating I'm completely different. That's when I'm more open to, you know, having sex outside and being way more playful, trying new things. You know, perhaps this is when I'm more open to group sex or threesomes or um, going to play parties and, and stuff like that. I'm way more adventurous in summer. There is no way I would ever think about doing anything like that when I'm in my winter. No way, Jose. So just be mindful of your seasons throughout your menstrual cycle. But then further on from that, we have cycles within our life. You know, we have periods that we go through where we're just not feeling alive. Where, you know, perhaps we're going through some massive shifts in our life, not just in the bedroom, but, you know, holistically. Uh, It could be. You know, we know just when you're growing up, you go through these big transitions and they are really meaningful. And that can um, that can put your sexual state into a winter phase. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And what we can do is we can put so much pressure on ourselves to be showing up like we're still in our summer when actually... All our bodies are really wanting to do is to rest and rejuvenate and save that energy for ourselves. Winter is a really important phase of our lives and of our sexual cycles to be aware of and to respect and to honor and not make ourselves wrong for it. There is absolutely nothing wrong with wanting and needing to take a break from having sex absolutely nothing nothing wrong with it in fact it should be self should I don't like using that word but I want to invite you to really celebrate it you know use this time to get to know your body and your sensuality in other ways if you're not wanting penetration then great you know don't make yourself wrong and also be mindful of your self-talk be mindful of that inner critic 
and try and approach your sexuality when you're in winter with an abundance mindset and know and believe in yourself that it's going to come back because it will, it will, it always does. It is absolutely going to come back and you don't need to worry about it. So there's one final thing that I wanted to mention and that is Perhaps, perhaps one of the reasons why you are not feeling turned on with the sex that you're having is because you're sleeping with the wrong person. Now, I know that this is a controversial statement. And look, if you are in a long term relationship with somebody who you absolutely adore and love, yet you're just in a winter, winter season of your of your of your life you know be mindful of that but there are other times when we are simply with the wrong person and we know it intuitively those little voices inside our gut are telling us that there is something wrong and that we need to make a change but we ignore it see if this is you then this part of this podcast will really resonate with you. And you might hate me for saying it. But the reality is, is we all know what to do. Deep down, underneath it all, we all know what the right thing to do is. But the problem is that so often we ignore it. We ignore it for so long because, you know, perhaps like you have a life with this person or perhaps it's early in a relationship and you really, really, really want it to work and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with loving someone and wanting to be optimistic and wanting it to work. Of course, like we're only human. But the longer that we go ignoring and suppressing our intuition, the longer we suppress the 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 epicenter of our sexuality because being in our bodies living a turned on life being in integrity with who we are and feeling really alive in all aspects of life as well as the bedroom means following your intuition and listening to your heart even if it's uncomfortable, even if it could really stir things up. And that's why it takes a lot of courage sometimes. What happens when we ignore our intuition is our bodies start to shut down. You know, our bodies, like our intuition is our creative energy. Our intuition is the epicenter of our sexuality, like I said before. And if we're ignoring it and if we're suppressing it, then we are not going to feel turned on. If you are subconsciously, even so subtly, you know, sleeping with the wrong person, even though you want to and you want to love them so much and you want everything to work out and so on and so forth, they're a beautiful person, there's nothing wrong. But you know deep down within your body that it's a no and you're not listening to that that can be really detrimental to you know your self-esteem your self-worth and it can really 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 kill your sex drive so that's just something to be mindful of and you know The intention with this podcast is to just give you the awareness tools you know Just because you may have listened to that last snippet of this podcast and it might be resonating true for you, but you simply don't want to listen to it. You're like, no, I don't, um, that's a no. I'm, I don't want to take that on board yet. That's okay. You know, everything happens in time and everything happens when you're ready to do it. But awareness is power and it's up to you to choose It's up to you to choose for yourself what you want, you know, and the reality is that when we aren't listening to our intuition on this level and if we're sleeping with someone and if we're in relationship with someone who really isn't a match and isn't energetically aligned, then that will affect your sex life. It will affect your turn on. 
And I just wanted to bring that up. Mm. Ah, thanks so much for listening. I'd love to, love to, love to hear from you. And I'd love to hear how you are enjoying the summer series because these episodes are shorter. They are more specific information. If you have a certain topic that you would like me to cover in the summer series, please, please, please don't hesitate in letting me know because I would love to hear from you. I always, always love hearing from you. And um, oh, also one more thing is next week, which is November the 27th. If you're based in Auckland, then come to Pillow Talk. I've actually just released some more tickets because they were selling out and um, it's quite a big venue. And I just felt like because of the topic, which is how to become magnetic and attract the love you desire. It's still an intimate topic, of course, but it's not as intimate as, you know, like the one that we did before, which was sexy self-care and masturbation and so on. This is a little bit more high level. So I felt like a bigger group would be beneficial actually. So if you are interested, if you want to come and meet some epic like-minded women, I've got so many, I've got like ladies coming down from way up North driving for five hours. I've got another beautiful woman flying up from Wellington. Like honestly, it is going to be lush. I've got food that we can graze on together, some epic music so that we can all like luxuriously swing our hips around and just enjoy the space and connect and share and really get into the core values of what it is that we actually want in life. So many times we want to manifest things, but we don't actually really know what we want. (laughs) We're also just going to be identifying our core values and we're going to be learning how to level up our self-worth so that we can actually match what it is that we truly want. Mm. it's going to be really cool I'm super looking forward to it and I'm simply just looking forward to being surrounded by beautiful women again because these events you know I love presenting I love being a part of it but you know so much of the magic so much of so much of the juice is in the sharing and the networking between between these epic women so absolutely get involved that's it from me I'm over and out it's my birthday wish me happy birthday send me all the birthday love I love receiving love on my Instagram or via email so yeah please don't hesitate in getting in touch because I always 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 love to hear from you ah okay goodbye beautiful beautiful people if you enjoyed this episode hit like and subscribe or share it with someone who you feel could benefit from hearing it too my mission is to bring healthy sexuality to the mainstream so be sure to leave your five-star review on your favorite podcasting app because that way this content can land in the ears of those who need it the most If you're looking for more resources on how to live a turned on life, check out my website at www.laura-allen.com where you'll find events, coursework, free downloadable workbooks, as well as my coaching packages. And lastly, I want to thank you for taking the time to prioritize yourself in this exquisite way, because when we do, that's when we can really start to show up for the rest of the world. And until next time, thank you so much for listening and I'll be back with another episode soon.